Hey guys, Dr. Josh Axe here with Jeffrey Smith. Welcome to Ancient Medicine Today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top 10 GMO foods you've gotta be aware of. In fact, we say top 10. We've got three bonuses that are gonna shock you. They're actually new GMO foods on the market that you probably don't know about that we'll share with you here in just a minute. And hey, if you are with us that GMO should be banned, take a minute right now, punch that share button right now, help us spread the word that food should be medicine, not poison. So Jeffrey, it's great to have you here today. We're talking about non-GMOs. And if you don't know Jeffrey, he is the pioneer of the non-GMO movement. He's also the founder of the Institute of Responsible Technology. And we're gonna talk about some of his revolutionary programs here at the end. But let's dive right in here, Jeffrey, and talk about number one food we wanna stay away from that's a GMO is corn products. Okay, corn genetically engineered, 93% of the corn in the United States. A lower percentage for corn in the cob, but if you have corn tortillas, corn syrup, et cetera, and it doesn't say organic or non-GMO, it is genetically engineered. Now the corn is engineered to produce a toxic insecticide that pokes holes in the stomachs of the insects to kill them, and a 2012 published research study shows it can poke holes in human cells as well. It also can be sprayed with toxic herbicides, so it's a combination of a pesticide being produced by the corn and an herbicide being sprayed on it. Nasty stuff. Some recent evidence showed serious gastrointestinal disorders in rats that ate this corn. Wow, incredible. Next product here is soy. Now, a lot of you know soy was a health food, labeled a health food, in the, uh, especially in the 80s and 90s. Today, though, many people are realizing that it causes major hormone and endocrine disruption in the body. Talk to us about soy. Soy, 94% of the soy in the United States genetically engineered to not die when sprayed with Roundup herbicide. It makes weeding easier for farmers. They can spray over the entire field with Roundup. It kills all the weeds, but not the genetically engineered Roundup ready soy with genes inserted into their DNA. Unfortunately, that Roundup gets absorbed into the soybean and we end up eating the Roundup ready soy, which can link to, is linked to a lot of different diseases and disorders. When mice were fed Roundup ready soy for eight months, they had damage to their testicles, the young sperm cells, the pancreas, the liver, and many other um, animal products Animal studies have shown serious problems. Like in Russia, they fed genetically modified soy to mother rats starting two weeks before they got pregnant. They continued to feed them GM soy, and by when, when they got when they had gave birth to the offspring, more than half of their offspring died within three weeks, compared to a 10% death rate when the moms were eating non-GM soy. So avoid eating products from with soy unless it says organic or non-GMO. Well, great, great, uh, great points there. I mean, it is shocking how damaging GMOs are to our bodies. And they're still out there today. They don't even have to be labeled. That's what we're here for is we're here to stop GMO. So, hey, help us spread this message right now. Take a minute and press that share button. Help us spread the word. We're live right now trying to teach people how to go GMO free. Number three here. Uh, Jeffrey, canola. Canola, about 95% of the canola in North America is genetically engineered not to die when sprayed with either Roundup or other herbicides. When it gets made into canola oil, unfortunately, the herbicides can hang around. So you're maybe eating or drinking stuff that contains large amounts of herbicide, which includes Roundup, and Roundup is a class 2A carcinogen, meaning it may probably cause cancer in humans. According to the World Health Organization, it causes cancer in animals, it can damage human DNA, causing mutations which can lead to cancer, and where it is sprayed in high concentrations, there's high amounts of cancer. Avoid canola unless it says non-GMO or organic. Next one here, alfalfa, and I'll say, especially when we're looking at one and four here, a lot of cows, you know, cattle today are fed alfalfa. This might surprise people because typically alfalfa, alfalfa is thought of this as this health food, but it's genetically modified as well. Right, not only the alfalfa, but oh. the canola meal, the soy, and the corn are all used as animal feed. Wow. So this is where we want to avoid the milk, meat, and eggs from animals that are, avoid, that are fed GMOs, so it has to be organic. If you see something that's naturally raised, it doesn't mean it's non-GMO. Mm. It could be without, without antibiotics, it could be um, grass-fed, but grain-finished, grain meaning soy and corn, so you want 100% grass-fed or wild-caught or organic in the animal products that you're eating. Awesome, great tips here. All right, number five here, sugar beet. Now this is a surprising one. A lot of times people might look at the back of a package and say, no soy, no corn, 
and it just says sugar on it. Can something be labeled just sugar, but actually be genetically modified from sugar beet? You rarely see the word sugar beet on U.S. packages. It usually says sugar or pure cane sugar. If it says pure cane sugar, it's just cane sugar. If it says sugar, most of it comes from sugar beets. Wow. And nearly all the sugar beets in the United States are genetically engineered not to die when sprayed with Roundup herbicide. So you may have Roundup residues. We need to check. Sugar can, may have enough to cause problems. No one has done the research, but I would say if you want to avoid GMOs, you want to avoid products that use sugar beets. And of course, sugar itself isn't good in the first place, but then you genetically mod it comes from a genetic genetically modified plant, major issue. And we talked about two of the biggest sources of sugar, corn syrup and sugar from sugar beets, stay away. Number six here is cotton. People don't think of cotton as a food, but think of cottonseed oil, which can contain large amounts of the herbicides that they spray on cotton. Now, the herbicide which is sprayed on the, the Roundup Ready cotton, of course, is Roundup, and they have found the residues of the active ingredient of Roundup, called glyphosate, on feminine hygiene products, on bandages. So we want to be careful when we're applying um, cotton to our skin, try and get it organic, if at all mm -hmm. possible, and of course, avoid the cottonseed oil, and they find that in a lot of processed foods. Yeah, Jeffrey, number seven here is papaya. Most of the time people think of this as a tropical health food. They don't realize even internationally, or I guess, you know, across the ocean, people are growing GMOs there too. Where does most of the GMO papaya come from? Either Hawaii or China. Wow, okay. So it's the only two places where we know of that they're growing genetically modified papaya. Mm. So if it says papaya and it says from Hawaii or China, I would avoid it. Great tips here. Number eight, summer squash and zucchini. I bet this is a surprising one for some people. I think a lot of people, Jeffrey, have heard a lot of these others, but not this one. Yes, I'm afraid that our favorite uh, summer squash and zucchini may be genetically engineered. Now, both the papaya, the summer squash, and the zucchini are all engineered to resist viruses being infecting the plants. But a virologist tells me that it is possible that by eating these things, it might create viral proteins inside our body. Wow. And if it, creates, if it produces viral proteins that we're consuming, that can potentially suppress our immunity to viral infection. So there's a lot of evidence that viral proteins can do this. They insert genes that produce viral proteins. It hasn't been studied, but the vir virologists that I talk to, they're very concerned about this potential danger, which means we'd be more susceptible to colds and other serious viruses. Yeah, as Jeffrey's talking about here, there are so many side effects, many of which we don't even know about yet because we're not doing as much testing as we should be, That's not right. even near the amount of testing we should be. So again, we're not saying, Never eat papaya, never eat summer squash. We're just saying when you buy them, make sure they're organic or non-GMO verified or both, even better. Number nine here, yes. animal products, and this is a big one. Yes, I mean, even honey can have genetically modified uh, pollen in it, but most people, when they think of animal products, they think of milk, meat, and eggs. So um, I have talked to people who, when they eat conventionally grown, meaning GM-fed animal products, they react or their family reacts. And they're, they're in, the, in the FDA files that were turned over on the basis of a lawsuit, they showed that the FDA had a lot of war warnings. Their scientists warned their superiors that GMOs might be dangerous, but they were ignored. One set of warnings came from the Center, Center for Veterinary Medicine. And the head of the Center for Veterinary Medicine in the FDA said that the milk and meat of animals that have been fed GMOs carries unique risks. We all know the, the process of bioaccumulation. The animal takes a bite of genetically modified soybean that contains herbicides on it, Roundup. That Roundup might be deposited in the tissue, and then every, more, every bite that they take, a little more and a little more and a little more. So there may be more poison in the flesh of the animal or in their milk than they're normally eating in one bite. Wow. So this is an, an area where we want to pay more attention to avoiding the animal products from animals that have been fed GMOs. Yeah, one of the things I used to uh, teach my patients, uh, Jeffrey, is that if you are especially shopping on a budget and you really have to focus and say, okay, there are only certain foods I'm gonna buy organic. Meat, dairy products, I mean, these very are expensive. at the very, very top of the list. Now, this one might surprise some people. Talk to us about this, microbes and enzymes. Yes, this is a harder one to track because the, sometimes the enzymes that are used as cooking agents 
They're not even listed mm. on the product. They're rarely Many listed. Many of them, the some of them come from papaya even. Yeah, yeah. papaya and wow. also the, the yeasts that they create. Mm. So the cooking agents, the way to avoid that is to buy organic, which does not allow the use of these genetically modified cooking agents and processing agents. So Jeffrey, talk to us. There's a few, and this, is, two what, more. this is what we wanted to share with you. And this might really surprise you. By the way, do, do us a favor right now. People need to be on right now, on our live broadcast, listening to this because some of the people, viewers out there, some people might have heard of corn, soy, canola. A lot of people, and I would guess 90% of people watching this, have not heard these last two new genetically modified foods. So take a second right now, punch that share button. Let's help teach people how to use food as medicine, not poison. What are these last two shockers that are now becoming genetically modified? Apples and potatoes, I'm afraid. Apples and potatoes. So here's the reason they genetically engineer apples and potatoes, so that when you slice them, they don't get brown. Now, they're using a technology which some scientists think are more, is more dangerous than any of the other previous GMOs. It's called double-stranded RNA. I'll make it simple. They put in a genetic code into the crop to silence a gene. The gene normally expresses a protein that causes the potato or the apple to brown. They put in a code that silences the gene. What are scientists afraid of? Well, this code links up with a complementary code in the crop. We have the same complementary code in our DNA. So what if it matches and links up with and silences a gene that we rely on. Mm. It's possible that eating the, the potato or apple could reprogram the expression of our DNA, and I'll give you an example. Um, there was a honeybee, a honey, set of honeybees, part of an experiment. They were fed some of this double-stranded, a different, different double-stranded RNA in a single meal. <clears throat> it was supposed to have no effect. Over the next few weeks, it altered the expression of over 1,400 genes in the DNA of the honeybee. That's over 10% of the genes. What that means is the entire profile of health of these bees could be affected by a single meal. So we are very concerned about this potato mm. and apple. Yeah, so even in buying apples and potatoes in the future, keep your eye on this. This is why I'd make sure to sign up for uh, Jeffrey's newsletter. You can actually do that by going to responsibletechnology.com my newsletter uh, on DrAxe.com. Oh org. yeah, responsibility te uh, responsibletechnology.org.org. But sign up, stay advised here because Jeffrey's pioneering this. He's this is his mission. This is his life's passion: is banning GMOs and really helping educate the public on the potential dangers and side effects associated with those. And Jeff, we, we didn't even get into this today. One of the most heartbreaking things for me is I'm a big raw local honey fan. I know that it's been used for centuries to treat allergies and infections and naturally support the uh, advancement of your own immune system over time. Bees are dying. People are dying and getting diseases because of genetically modified foods, and you're here to fight against it. And we would ask you to do the same thing with us by sharing this on Facebook and voting with your dollars. Jeffrey here has created some incredible products. I know even uh, uh, I've got a lot of chiropractors and doctors in my family. They play your genetic roulette DVD in their clinic all the time. Talk to us about your other products and then going to your website. Okay, well I have a book, Seeds of Deception. We have a book, Genetic Roulette, a movie, Genetic Roulette, a new movie coming out called Secret Ingredients. You can watch the trailer at secretingredientsmovie.com. It's about families that heal from chronic conditions when they switch to organic food. We're talking autism, infertility, mm. cancer, skin conditions, depression, allergies, etc. And we have a newsletter and plenty of other um, assets, plenty of other educational materials at responsibletechnology.org, a speaker training program, a way to get active in your local community, a way to help ban the spraying of Roundup and other toxic pesticides in your area. We have a lot of assets, a lot of materials, and we'd love to have you visit the site and participate. Hey, thanks so much guys for watching. This has been Jeffrey Smith and myself, Dr. Josh Axe. And hey, we'd love to hear from you. If you are banning with us to ban and at the very least start labeling GMO foods. Let us know that. Uh, let us know that right now here on Facebook or our YouTube channel as well, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for being on mission with us to help ban GMOs. Safe eating.